less than a week away from running my first half marathon. And when you're running upwards of 10 miles a day to train for a long run, your body can start to take a beating. Tyler Anderson is a board certified sports specialist at Empower You, and he's here to show us a few ways we can recover following a long run or even a race. Race day is almost here. Oh, so, man. All right, so I crossed the finish line. Absolutely. And I'm super excited. This is exactly how I, I'm going to look, I promise. <laughs> it's not going to be like I'm going to die. I'm going to be really excited. Absolutely. What is my first step towards a good recovery right when I cross the finish line? Yeah, so the first step is take care of yourself. And when we say that, what we mean is you're going to take a walk. Walk 10 to 20 minutes to make sure that you give yourself enough time to recover from the race. The last thing you want to do is sit down, lay down, let everything kind of just sit and stay stagnant because what happens is the blood pressure can drop and we can see some fainting or lightheadedness and we don't want to have that. So what we're trying to do is just an active cool down recovery just like any other race or any other exercise you would do. And while doing that, we're allowing the body to kind of flush the metabolites and lactic acid that is built up through that process. I mean, I've been running hard for Absolutely. two and plus hours. So yep. at that point, if I just go from running to on the ground, so it's not a good situation. A good no. Situation. And, the, and the other main important component is hydration. So you need to find what works for you. A lot of times um, people will just drink water. Others are like more of an electrolyte beverage, but you need to start hydrating your body. They typically recommend about 16 ounces for every pound lost. Now we're not going to have you jump on a scale after the race, but at the same time, that shows how much it is important to hydrate because your body is going to flush a lot of fluid out. And that's not the good kind of weight to lose. The no, water. no, I mean, it's, it's a goal weight. So it's exciting <laughs> to have a goal in front of you. So I'm done with the race. I've walked around. I know it's, I feel a lot better when I keep walking. So yep. I've been walking around, I've been hydrating 20, 30 minutes. Now what's my next step? So the next step is more of just a general lower extremity stretching routine that works for you. It may be a curb on your calf stretch that you kind yeah. of find a spot to kind of talk to people while you're going through that. It may be a general hamstring stretch or quad stretches. All of those things are fine. What we're really trying to do at this point is prevent cramping, keep muscles kind of moving per se. And then we would get into more of what we're going to demonstrate today that evening or the following day. So half an hour and that's where if you're my friends and family, you can talk to me. But before that, I'm just I'm taking care of me. Absolutely. I'm walking around. Pictures I'm having... have plenty of time to get those. Should be a nice day. <laughs> so good. you're good. Absolutely. So for the next part, how soon do I need to do it after the race? I think too soon is a problem. So I think sometimes people get a little aggressive early. So that we actually want to give yourself maybe that evening, six to eight hours after the race. If you're not ready, absolutely don't do something like this if you're too sore. But we do want to start get um, some self massage. This is basically teaching yourself how to do some low level deep tissue massage that can be effective maybe the following day as well. So that night, maybe the next day. Yep, okay. Absolutely. All Whatever right. works for that person. I'm going to be really tired that night. So <laughs> exactly. Okay, Sleep is key. Let's go ahead and grab the foam roller first. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the right quad. So I'm going to have you on your stomach um, rested down to your elbows. We're going to be in the middle of that right thigh. And from there, I'm going to have you just slowly scan through the quad muscle. So you're going to go from your hip all the way down to your knee. Along the way, we like to call them like spots or issues or tightness in certain muscles. So in that spot, you're basically going to maintain pressure. If you find one, you'll know it. I know it and right then here. Slowly, you're going to perform some pumps. This is called a pin and stretch. She's pinning down the muscle where it's tight, and then she's stretching over the top by bringing the knee towards her bottom. From there, we typically would do about two minutes on each leg. This is like, I mean, I just had my 10 mile run on Sunday, so I really feel that. That doesn't. That, yeah, no, this what is, is a great routine. What do you guys say? It hurts so post, good. Absolutely. That's okay. a tagline we love to use quite often. So from there, we're going to roll her glutes. So we actually have multiple muscle groups, but what she's going to do is cross the right leg over the left, and that's going to roll to her right so that she exposes that right glute. From there, she's just going to slowly move back and forth. This is a smaller muscle compared to your quads. So you don't have as much surface area to cover. So once you find a spot, same thing, you kind of camp out on it. This is a really good one to roll out, especially by the end of a race when glutes are pretty tired from pushing through that race routine. And same thing, typically we would do about one to two minutes on, on each side. Okay, that, that also hurts really good. No, <laughs> yeah, and that okay. one's a really good one, especially if you've been sitting too long. So from there, we're going to go to the calf muscle. So what we have is a lacrosse ball. You can use a tennis ball, golf ball, um, baseball is a little too extreme sometimes, but okay. <laughs> getting into some of those tougher spots, what she's going to do, she's going to sit right on that calf muscle, put the left leg on top, and then just kind of balance herself nice and slowly. She's going to work up and down, 
again until she finds a spot that's a little bit more sore. Now you can be creative. You can go through some of the inside, <laughs> outside, but it's not hard to find, right? It's if not. you've been running as much as you have, you're really gonna be sore all over. Yeah, I can feel and that. then from there, we still like to move that foot a little bit. So we find a spot and then I like to call like pump the gas or kind of pull the brakes back. Oh, but basically you're actively yeah. stretching that muscle through that full range. This will be the face I'm also making at the race. Hey, uh, <laughs> it's all good because we wanna help you feel better the next day. Okay. So from there, we're actually gonna take shoe off and we're gonna roll the foot. The foot is extremely important to kind of have some self care. You're actually gonna stand up with me and we're gonna roll the arch of the foot on the ball. And once you kind of find a spot, you're gonna keep pressure on it and you're gonna work on your toes kind of squeezing down Ooh. and then splaying up. What we're trying to do is kind of maintain some pressure on the arch. That feels that, really good. Yeah, so a lot of times when the mileage ticks up, what we see is that people start to notice some foot issues, maybe in the improper footwear, or if they're just really not used to that much mileage. This is a really good routine for self-care of the foot muscles that get really tired as well. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Okay, so you've walked me through, I'm across the finish line, I yep. feel good. I keep walking for 20 or 30 minutes, I hydrate. Yep. Then my family and friends are allowed to talk to me. Absolutely. Light stretching, and then yep. sometime that night or the next day, if I feel good, kind sure. of get to this. How many, should I keep doing it for a few days? Um, I would say more than anything is that you stay moving. No matter what that is, it could be just a light walk with your kids, dogs, anything like that. Could be just if you have access to a pool at about day two or three, you kind of get in. But the key is cross training early. We don't want to really hit the mileage or like running unless you're an elite runner, which we do have a few of I those. definitely am. Right? Um, but about day seven to 10, we don't usually encourage people to start running again. That way they kind of let their body heal from the actual impact and mileage. All right, and you guys will be out at the Skedaddle, we will, so yeah, people have questions. We'll be there at the Expo Saturday, and then at the race day, uh, my brother-in-law's running, and then obviously we'll be cheering you on. All right, thank you. Absolutely. I'm prepared. Thank you for all of, oh, this is going to be yeah, good. hopefully it helps, and hopefully it's good. a good routine. <laughs> the countdown is on with just five days left until I run my very first half marathon. The Sioux Falls Skedaddle is April 25th. Join me in running the race or just join me as I go on this crazy adventure by following along on social media.